This is Scott Kaplan and Crew Tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew Show. On the mightier 1090 AM. ESPN Radio. SoCal Sports Talk. Here's Scott Kaplan, Alex Padilla, and John Browner. Hey, great friends. What is happening? This is Kaplan and Crew with Grande and the Brown Man. And we are coming to you from the 7 Mile Casino Studios. 7milecasino.com. It is Monday afternoon. We are just getting onto the airwaves of 1090. We're just getting onto the stream of YouTube. We're putting it out all over every audio podcast platform right now. And um, later tonight, 7 o'clock tonight, we will be on television, Channel 4 San Diego, Channel 4 Santa Barbara. And if you're in Orange County or L.A., it's Channel 118 if you've got Cox or Spectrum cable. If you don't have Cox or Spectrum, forget it. It's over. Well, as we get on the air here on Monday afternoon, I hope everybody is over their Saturday night hangover because what happens Saturday night at Petco Park is something that we here in San Diego have never seen before. I, don't tell me about the 98 World Series, and the reason I say it like that is I, I wasn't here, okay? So you might tell me it was just as electric back then as it was uh, this past weekend. But I'm saying that we've never seen anything like this before because the very first day that Petco Park opened in 2004, I know for me, I was standing right there at home plate when Tony Gwynn came walking out from right field. And I was standing there for all of those ceremonies. And from 2004 until 2022, all we really saw was a couple of playoff teams in 2005 and six that frankly weren't very good and weren't going anywhere. We saw on television the playoff series in 2020, the shortened season, but let's face it, nobody was really there. And we've gotten to this point. And I will say this, if this past weekend's National League Division Series was against Atlanta or Philly or Milwaukee or the Mets, I don't think anything could have matched the energy and the electricity of downtown other than the Padres and the Dodgers. That's what made this series so incredible. What also made it incredible was this. We all know the numbers going in. We all know that there were 19 games played during the regular season, and the Dodgers won 14, and the Padres only won five. The Padres couldn't win a series against the Dodgers. They couldn't take two out of three. That's all that was left. It was a 1-1 series tie leaving L.A. They come to San Diego. It's a best two out of three. The Padres hadn't taken two out of three from the Dodgers all season long. So let me be the first person to say publicly, outwardly, and admittedly, I doubted, and I have been proven drastically wrong. While my man Browner here was cheerleading all season long and trying to instill this confidence, I sat here like a person who's been following the Padres for 20 years and never one time believed. Because I told you, the battle scars, man. Never one time did I believe. But... And even coming in, I'll just say this, even coming into this series, two out of three here in San Diego, Browner said they're going to win three in a row. They're going to win both of these games in San Diego. I did not believe. Even when the Dodgers were leading 3-0 in this game, I still didn't believe that the Padres were going to come back. What happened in the seventh inning Saturday night, the five runs scored, and then the rain started coming down in Petco Park. And I mean pouring rain. The rain started coming down and I'm like, what's I'm getting goosebumps. Like what is going on here? And then when Josh Hader closed out the Dodgers reality set in, Oh my God, the Padres have actually done this. So for someone like me, who's been called a doubter guilty, who's been called a hater, who's been a constant critic, not a jump on the bandwagon kind of fan. I must say, for all the times I said that A.J. Preller should be fired. You know, uh, wrong. These guys have proven the doubters, like myself, wrong. And I will say this. Congratulations to the Padres as an organization. Congratulations to these players who got the job done. But most importantly, this is where I'm coming from. Congratulations to the fans of San Diego. I said it years ago when the Royals won the World Series. This is what I want for this city. Now, this hasn't been a World Series win yet, but we all understand the magnitude of beating the Dodgers and the celebration that took place in the ballpark, 
in the streets of downtown San Diego and everything that's been going on since Saturday night is like, I haven't seen anything quite like it, at least not related to the Padres. So for everybody that's joining us, whether it's on radio, on YouTube, tonight on TV, audio podcast, social media, wherever you are, if you're a Padres fan or a San Diego supporter, congratulations to the city of San Diego and to the fan base of San Diego. I thought Alex Rodriguez did a really good job on Fox Sports explaining, hey, the Clippers are in L.A. They used to be in San Diego. The Chargers are in L.A. They used to be in San Diego. Thank goodness Matt Vaskersian was on the desk on Saturday night for Fox Sports' postgame show because he explained the history of the Padres to the country. And Matt Vaskersian will join us coming up in just a couple of minutes. So with all of that opening monologue, congratulations, San Diego. You got it. You wanted it. You earned it. You partied. And there's a lot more to do. As Kobe would say, job's not done yet. Mamba mentality. Here they are. Grande and the Brown Man in the Seven Mile Casino Studios celebrating Saturday night beautifully in the rain. Fellas, good afternoon. I, I, I got to say one thing, and then Alex can jump in, and then I'll be very quick with this. Because if I don't say it now, I'll forget it. The rain, you spoke about the rain. The rain was the glass ceiling breaking that was the Dodgers. That five-run seventh inning felt like the stadium just lifted off the ground. Like it, it He said the, the game was four-plus hours. Until the seventh inning, it felt like 10 hours. And then the seventh inning made the game feel like 10 minutes. Because after that point, it just became the eighth inning and the ninth inning. And when that rain started falling, for Alex and I, it didn't feel like it was bad. You said it was pouring. Him oh, and I dude. were like, it's not even raining that bad. Dude, I was soaked. Just the pure excitement. My sweater is still wet. Dude, I was <laughs> My <drenched. sweater. laughs> And I was so proud. I was so proud of everybody in the ballpark. Because, look, this ain't Seattle, Jack, you were, no, where you're accustomed to the rain. Voice. Dude, I, I'm telling you right now, <laughs> we sat there in the rain. Nobody laughed. Nobody's like, oh, we got to go hide somewhere because it's raining. Everybody's like, it doesn't matter. I was drenched, drenched head to toe. Nobody was leaving because what you were witnessing on history. Saturday night was history. Yeah, I mean, listen, me and Brian were sitting next to each other, and uh, we were like, oh, this is – this is bad, man. This is bad. It's seventh <laughs> inning. It's three nothing. The bu- the bullpen gave up a run. We we just looked lifeless on offense. We're like, man, mm-hmm. this this ain't this ain't good, dude. And then I don't know what happened that seventh inning, man. I I don't know. Like honestly, I remember it all, but it's all a blur at the same time. I know. And right? uh, I when I watched when I rewatched the, the the highlights yesterday, um, it was incredible. Like. It came across on television, which I didn't think it could, because being there, it was so loud and so energetic after they scored those three runs. I was like, there's no way this is going to translate to TV, but it really, really did because we were that loud and people were going that crazy. And the whole environment with the rain that they didn't stop it, it was awesome. You, you know, could not it, stop that game. Like, no it was way just, they were stopping that game. It was... uh and it was it, it was like the guys that we called out all all year long, yeah. you know. It was the same dudes that we called out that we were like, they got to do something. And it's those dudes that came through, was, which have been doing all postseason, man. Dude, you no know, Grisham scored a run. Uh, Nola got it started. Kim got the hit. Soto got the hit. Cronenworth got the hit. You know, all the dudes that, that, that you've been saying, that we've all been saying, they need to do something. And they all did it that inning. And when you see what it meant to the players – it validates what the fans feel in the stands too. Like the players were freaking out just as much as Petco Park was that night. It was uh, incredible, and honestly, like a moment that I'll I'll never forget. Being at a, at an event like that, I've I've been to some cool stuff before, you know, uh, but nothing like that. Nothing. No. And, and do you guys agree that if it would have been the Phillies or the Mets or the Braves or the oh, it, it would not have been the same. I mean, the and, like not. here's here's what I'll say. I I wonder. I do wonder. When the Phillies come to town, can can the the National League Championship Series match the energy of what we just all experienced? You know, I hope I always worry about that too. When you have this large monkey that this this dragon that you've been trying to slay, as Peter Seiler said, for so long, and then you do it, and you still got 
more to play. That's a, always the biggest concern is did they just win their World Series? Mm-hmm. See, I, a, it, it's a valid concern, I would yeah, say. Yeah, it's Alex, not just the players, it's the fan base too. Mm-hmm. We, Alex and I had this conversation when it, as we were walking to more party or at some point we were having this conversation. I think not. Because once you beat the dragon, there, fe- there is no fear. There mm-hmm. is no, you're now looking at the next opponent going, you're screwed, dude, because we look what we did to them. Now we're about to crush you. I yeah, think that you, their yeah. confidence now going forward, regardless of the score, by the way, re- because of the seventh inning, regardless of the score, I think they believe, I think they've always believed, but now th- it reverberates. I think I'm everyone much- believes. I don't think that the, that clubhouse can be any more confident in themselves than exactly. they are going into that series. Because... Well, look, I mean, you, you've beaten the Mets on the road, mm-hmm. a, a hundred plus win team. team. Now you, now you finally have finally dealt with the Dodgers. Like when Bob Melvin said in the last series of the season between the Padres and Dodgers here in San Diego, when Bob Melvin said, we've closed the gap, we all, I think could see that. Yeah. Okay. It, it's closer now, but they still won. Right. So right. so even though the gap may have been closed, they still won, which is why, look, again, I have been admittedly a doubter. And even going into this series, I just based on all the data, I was like, I still think the Dodgers will wind up winning this thing. You talk about a season that now we talked all year. What's a successful season? Make it to the postseason. Well, they check. Win a series. Wow. Check. Win the the division series against the Dodgers. Check. Mm-hmm. Truth be told, even if they don't advance past the Phillies, we're, we I think everybody would say it's a super successful season. Disappointing only because you've everybody said Atlanta was the best team and the Dodgers were right there. And since both of the big guys have been knocked out, not trying to take anything from Philly because I don't know much about Philly other than when Me they either. were here, they beat the Padres. And got hurt. <laughs> right. That was the Blake Snell, Bryce Harper situation. Right. But but seriously, like, the fact that they pulled this off, we will all look at this as a successful season, but now because it's Philly, not Atlanta, not New York, not L.A., now you've got you, – you have a much better chance. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's kind of like when the U.S. Olympic team in 1980, they beat the Russians – but that wasn't the gold medal game and they finished the job. Can the Padres finish the job? I mean, in all honesty, when you talk about finishing the job, the job may be in Houston. And when you talk about finishing the job and that team is as good as advertised. So I, but focusing on what we all just experienced, I thought that when Hader came in, it fell over. I mean, oh, to yeah. be perfectly honest with you, when Suarez came in, it kind of felt over. But it, Hader came in to face the top of their lineup. You it know? felt over. It felt yeah. over. And that's yeah. one of the things where we – I always had confidence. I didn't know they would beat them. I, 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 I had confidence that they would do well against them because I, I've seen the Padres pitching succeed against the Dodgers. And like as Bob Melvin said, close the gap because we didn't beat them. But our starters – succeeded against that lineup and so it was all the only question i had was when the bullpen gets the ball because they were terrible during the season against the dodgers what could we do and they showed up big time Mm -hmm. now they won't get a lot of credit but the padres bullpen in this particular series (laughs) were as important as anything yeah yeah i'll tell you guys what um in terms of the actual day itself saturday what a day Oh man! I mean, for, for for me, here's I'll just tell you. Um, I went down to the San Diego Open, the tennis tournament that we had been promoting. Um, and listen, tennis fans were there. Place was jam packed. Number one tennis player in the world, number six tennis player in the world. Very impressive. So I went there, stopped in, watched some of that, and then cruised into downtown San Diego. Got to Union Kitchen and Tap. Thanks to our man Eric Lightstein. Thanks out, to out. his manager Clem. Those guys took such good care of us. They were great. Linda Welby showed up. Her whole party. And then the great friends, man, Tommy, Tommy, Joe Rigby, uh, Bernard Thompson, Tito. I'm trying to think of who else, maybe whose names I'm, I'm missing here. Uh, Michael Ambacher. Mm-hmm. Uh, the names just keep going on and on. The great friends were all there hanging out, celebrating, enjoying. Because, look, this was one of these moments that if you're a San Diego supporter, 
I'm like, dude, the Chargers left. And there is no NBA team. And there is no NHL team. And this is the only major league team in town. And they've sucked forever. And all of a sudden, they're finally good. And they're playing the Dodgers at home in an elimination game with a chance to advance to the NLCS. In the nearly 20-year history of Petco Park, an event of this magnitude, not Bad Bunny, not the Rolling <laughs> Stones, not Billy Joel, not Taylor Swift, nothing as a sports fan can equal or has equaled what we all experienced on Saturday. Yeah. And it was freaking awesome, man. And I'll tell you guys, you know, we started the night, the three of us started. We <laughs> Tickets, by the way, this is such a funny part of this whole thing. Tickets. So oh, you, you were moving, dude. Yikes. Well, here's what, here's what, we'll here's what happened. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. We well, here, get to but, here's, but here's what happened. So, so first things first, Bill Hagen gives us tickets. Shout out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to surprise you guys by saying, hey, guys, good news. We got tickets to the game. So we got the Bill Hagen tickets. Then Mark Loretta called me and said, hey, um, I know you asked for some tickets. Um, they came through. So I'm like, great. And, and the, the seats that Loretta got that we bought, they were better than the Bill Hagen seats. No, that no offense, been, Bill. That must have been Loretta Rowe because the guy next to us was the general manager of CBS television. Oh, yeah. really? Local, local, yeah. local. Yeah. The guys to my left or the guys to your to, right, Browner? To my, to my right, I'm sorry. Okay, gotcha. So um, I knew, though, cool dude, that cool. I wanted to spend a little bit of time um, in the front row because I kind of wanted to send a message to all my L.A. colleagues. Hey, King T-shirt sided hat i couldn't wait to do that well i get down to the front row i get down to the front row and my boy's like dude hang chill and then not only did i decide to hang out with him but then rachel and her friend came down into the the sony club area down below so now they're in there they're eating and drinking and having a great time and i thought i'd be there for like a half an inning maybe an, a full inning just for the goof of it all but the energy was such that I'm like, I'm not exactly going anywhere right now. In fact, I, I, even left, I left my hoodie with at, at my seat with you guys. Did anybody you grab that or no? No, no hoodie. No you hoodie. It's gone. You don't have a hoodie. It's bro. soaked, the bro. It was you soaked. Abandoned. You abandoned. So what did you guys do? Leave it? it? Yeah, we abandoned it. <laughs> I understand. I deserve to lose it. Gone. Um, but man, I, I'm down there in that front row. I had no phone battery, by the way. My phone was dead. So I had no idea, you know, who was kind of catching my act down there. But, dude, I'll tell you this right now. That video of the last pitch, which will live in San Diego sports history forever, bro, I am front and center, man. Bro, you got mm -hmm. two You got two iconic pictures that a lot of people, that one people will talk about. The Kaepernick Neal. You're in the back. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. in the back. You're like, you're like that alien that's always in the, in the right place at the right time that they keep <laughs> catching on camera. I'll tell you, man, I got to send a shout out to my friend, Steve Netsley. He has those front row seats. And I, like I said to him, I said, Hey, can I just come down for like a half an inning or an inning? I just want to, I want to be seen on, on, the, if this were the Phillies, if this were the Brewers, if this were the Bra I swear to you, I would have no interest in doing it, but because it was the Dodgers, I had to send a message, you know? And he's like, yeah, come on down. Be great. And then I was having such a great time. His son was sitting next to me and he and I were broing down. His wife was sitting there and we were having a great time. And by the way, the drinks are free down there. So they just kept flowing, you know? <laughs> well, they the kept way, flowing where we were, but. I was about to say, our drinks <laughs> ended up being free dude. too at the end of the night, baby. Oh, yeah. My bro, dude, that was that lady. Shout out to that lady. You know, you know Shout who out. you are. You, you know really, you guys had some lady in the, you, you guys had some lady buying you drinks in the stands? No, no. 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 This woman will remain. We won't say where she came from. Nope. Uh -huh. She'll remain nameless. So she stays employed. Uh -huh. That's it. Uh -huh. Okay. That's it. Well, what was even, so here's the th funny thing about tickets for this kind of stuff. When you put it out into the universe, like I need tickets, they yeah. just sort of seem to flow, you know? So we got the four Hagen tickets, which I gave to Rachel and, and her girlfriend and her two sons because they wanted to be there because they're, you know, these kids are crazy fans. Then we're at the, at the bar at Union and everybody needs tickets. You know, Bernardi needed tickets and Tito came through for him. He had an extra one. Mm -hmm. Tommy, Tommy had given his tickets to two Navy kids the night before. He literally is walking in and he talks to these two Navy kids. They don't have tickets. He gives his tickets to these two Navy kids. Tommy, Tommy doesn't have a ticket. Chris Reed, the actor. Dude, Chris Reed was like, Scott, listen, I don't know what it's going to take. I need to get into this game. I have to be there for this game. I'm like, dude, you're top priority on my list. So between Chris Reed, Tommy, Tommy, and then Alex brought one of his buddies with him, and he didn't have a ticket. What was he planning on doing, Grande? 
He was just he was he just kept checking the game time app. He's like, I'm gonna get in there eventually. <laughs> and then I, I I literally somebody somebody said to me an hour before game time, hey, do you need any tickets? I'm like, yeah. They're like, how about three tickets? I'm like, great. They sent them to me. Sent one to Alex's boy. Sent one to Chris Reed. Sent one to Tommy Tommy, and everybody was in. Mm-hmm. Man, it was so fun. It was so fun. It was a good. It was it was an amazing, unforgettable night for so many reasons. Yep. And it's dude, true. Union Kitchen and Tap. Union was, Kitchen Tap goes off. Bro, I was mingling. Yeah, you were. Oh, there were some. I, was I won't say anything. I won't say anything. Before and after. That's all. Just yeah, oh, we went for back real? there after, dude. Oh, hey, for oh, you didn't know. Oh, you didn't know that. Oh, so, yeah. no, no, because I talked to Alex on on Sunday, and he was like, "Dude, I'm hurting. I'm moving really slow. Whoa. Like, I would like to know what happened after the game." Because I made an escape. I mean, the game ended. We hung out for 30 minutes or so, but I made an escape. You guys, it seemed like you took downtown right. by storm. You went full stick West around. Coast elite. We went with Yeah, people. I had I had mm-hmm. I had other people with me. Listen, stick around. We're just getting rolling. Everybody's psyched. Town's on fire. We're in the seven mile casino studios. Matt Vaskersion coming up. This is Kaplan and Crew. We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and Crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew show on the Mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio. SoCal Sports Talk. You're watching Kaplan and Crew tonight, powered by the Mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio in your view, featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. Rome comes home. Yes, I said it. You can now catch the Jim Rome Show Monday through Friday, noon until 3 p.m. on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Back to San Diego, where it all started on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk. From fitness to medical technology, explore how people are leading healthier lives on your health. Join Erica Cardenas as she introduces you to health experts and discover how our daily choices affect our well-being. Plus, learn simple tips for healthier living. Your Health, Sunday at 4.30 p.m. on Your View and yourview.com. Your Health is brought to you by Clever Care Health Plan, your partners for comprehensive care. okay. I had a degree and work experience. I should be able to provide for my kids, but they're just things that you don't plan on in life. My husband got laid off and we are a family of five. My mom was diagnosed with stage four cancer. I would ask the doctors, what can I do? And they would just say, just make sure she's eating. Our lives just changed completely. Thank God that we always had a, a plate of food. When your air conditioner needs to be tuned up, repaired, or replaced, call Bill Howe, the name you have trusted for over 40 years. We carry the most reliable, energy-efficient brands that will fit your budget. Whether you are looking for a traditional or ductless air conditioning system, you know who to call. Call 1-800-BILL-HOWE. Because we know how. Do the ups and downs of the financial markets have you on a roller coaster? Don't let the market take you and your investments for a ride. Stabilize your funds with SDCCU's Great Rate Savings, Money Market, or Certificate Accounts. Choose a savings option that meets your needs and watch your money grow with SDCCU. Earn 1.5% APY on a 12-month certificate or 2.5% APY on a 36-month certificate. Open an account at sdccu.com slash now. SDCCU, it's not big bank banking, it's better. Change the way you look and feel with San Diego's most comprehensive varicose and spider vein treatment facility. San Diego Varicose Vein Treatment Center offers minimally invasive, pain-free procedures performed by board-certified cardiologist Dr. Tahizade. With over 17 years of experience, we specialize in the diagnosis of varicose veins, spider veins on the face, hands, and legs, ankle discoloration, leg swelling, and more. Improve your vein health today. Visit consultation.sdveintreatment.com or call 619-582-2404. 
This is Scott Kaplan and Crew Tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew Show on the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio. SoCal Sports Talk. Here's Scott Kaplan, John Browner, and Alex Padilla. All right, great friends. We welcome you back inside the 7 Mile Casino Studios, 7milecasino.com. To all of our 1090 radio listeners, we're glad to have you guys here on what is a very exciting Monday afternoon after all of what happened Saturday night at Petco Park. Uh, to all of our TV viewers tuning in tonight on Channel 4 San Diego, you're going to love this because Matt Vaskersian is coming on the show here in one second. And back when Matt Vaskersian was calling Padre games, Padre games were on Channel 4 San Diego. As a matter of fact, Matt used to have home run calls, and when a ball would go over the Cox sign, he would say, Scott Kaplan wants Cox. He can't get Cox. I couldn't get it back then. Got it now. I got it now. And we're on it now. So here is Matt Vaskersian jumping in on Kaplan and crew. Matty V, thank you for being here today. How are you, man? Oh, Scotty, I have not uh, thought of that stuff in a while. That is absolutely true and um, horrifying and wonderful at the same uh, point in hearing that all over again. I'm doing good, man. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. I, I must tell you that I was there at the game on Saturday night, but on Sunday I went back, I put the game on, for the seventh inning and then the post game show. And man, was I happy that you were sitting on the desk. No offense to Kevin Burkhardt. He's a great guy, but he had to go call NFL games, but having you on the desk on Saturday night on the Fox post game show, I think a lot of San Diego people were really happy that you were there because Matt, you had the opportunity to explain to the national audience what it is to be in San Diego, to be a Padre supporter to, to know that 98 sparked the, the building of Petco Park. I'm just curious, like, was that all something you planned on doing or is that is that all organic and it just kind of happened that way? No, you know, thanks for saying that. And I was pretty, I was pretty pumped to be there that night too. It just kind of worked out that way. Um, uh, yeah, no, it wasn't pre-planned. I mean, we had a lot of canvas there at the end of the game. Um, and uh, I, I kind of asked permission to do that actually from uh, the production crew that, you know, I have a little institutional knowledge in the market, uh, a little depth with the history of the franchise. And I, I felt like it was it was a cool thing to do. And they were like, yeah, by all means, you know, go there for it. Um, I didn't want to make it all about uh, that, but I, I thought it was appropriate, you know, at a moment when the team was celebrating and getting as far as they have for only the third time in 54 seasons. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, and I, I think I could have gone on even longer and I, you know, uh, discretion being the better part of valor there. Like the other guys would have been, I think, iced out had I gone into the depths of uh, Padre lore. Um, so it, it was fun to be a part of for sure. But the thing I wanted to convey the most was that, you know, the Padres are more than just Manny Machado and, and Juan Soto, right? That's, that's the low hanging fruit of this, the current iteration of the team. And for good reason, they're stars and, and Manny for sure is, is the guy who brought them this far. But there's, there's more to it there for long-suffering Padre fans and people that have lived in San Diego and watched that team their whole lives. Um, long-suffering is a, a great phrase because this whole season, Matt, I doubted this team. And I kind of kept thinking to myself, it will fall apart at some time. And that is because of the battle scars of 20-plus years of being around this organization. And even back in the 2005 and 2006 years, they may have won division titles, but nobody really believed that they were going anywhere. And given all the data points of what the Dodgers have been doing to the Padres, particularly this year, I must say I, I didn't believe. But when I was standing there right behind home plate for the last out, I was like, oh, my God, this just actually happened. Yeah. It, you know, if it was any – that's a good point. If it was any other team than the Dodgers that they were trying to finish off to get to the LCS, um, I, I would have been way more confident. But you're right. The track record against the Dodgers, not very good since they chose not to hire Dave Roberts. Right. When he interviewed for the job prior to the 2016 season, the Dodgers have like a 720 winning percentage against the Padres. I mean, it's just been an unfair fight for years. Uh, the Padres leading into this series had lost 15 of their last 20 to the Dodgers. The Dodgers with that star studded payroll. And, uh, you know, top six hitters in their lineup are all all-stars. It's just, it's insane what they've built. And it makes it that much sweeter for Padres fans that it happened against the Dodgers. The, I think the mitigating factor for this team too, Scott, 
and I know you guys have talked about it a lot. Bob Melvin's really good. He's really, really good. He never makes it about himself. He wants to put the team in the best position to win. He's good with players. He's good with advanced stats. There's nothing about managing in 2022 that he's not good at, and he made a, a big impact on the team. Talking to Matt Vaskersian this afternoon. Matt Vaskersian, as many of you know, was the television play-by-play voice of the Padres. This is back in the early part of the 2000s and has gone on to great success with the MLB Network, uh, with ESPN, now with Fox, uh, calling Angels games. I mean, a very, very diverse resume around the game of baseball. Matt, I thought that Alex Rodriguez, I don't know how he kind of, I don't know where this came from, but gosh, I thought he did a great job on the post game sitting next to you because he also explained to the national audience, the Clippers were in San Diego, they're in LA. The Chargers were an institution in San Diego, they're in LA. The Padres are the only show in town and have been so bad for so long. So this fan base was ripe for this moment. How, how did A-Rod get so, uh, so wise to that? Uh, you know, it's funny you say that, Scott, because in the production meeting, when, when we were kind of vetting out directions that we wanted to go in, uh, in the case of either team winning, he brought up the Clippers leaving San Diego, and I laughed out loud. I was like, dude, that was a long time ago. I don't know if that's been a land win. <laughs> you know, I mean, we could talk about the Chargers leaving and the PTSD that still exists over that and the fact that the, you know, the Padres have the market to themselves there. But I don't know how relevant uh, the, the Clippers leaving for L.A. is. As it turns out, he was onto something because he was talking about specifically teams that leave San Diego for L.A., and in, in that case, it is a, a relevant uh, talking point, especially for older fans that remember the Clippers uh, in, a, in, in San Diego. So, you know, he's big on big picture stuff, Scott. He's a pretty interesting guy to work with because he is – Alex is much brighter than anybody gives him credit for. He's really a bright guy. Um, and he likes to do big picture stuff. And that, that happened to land a lot better than I thought it was going to. Yeah, he likes to use the phrases macro – versus micro and it does make him sound really smart by the way i i thought i thought that the 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 panel you guys have are excellent one i'm from chicago so frank thomas is always a plus for me uh david ortiz's insight on what the padres could be going to after this because he had beaten the yankees because a rye had brought it up after they had beaten the yankees they felt like no one else could touch them after that. Everybody else was in trouble. When you have a, a group like that, how do you go about moving the conversation? Do you just throw something out and let these guys run with it? Or is there a way that you have about going about asking the next question? Man, that's a, that's a great question. And I'm, I'm still not sure I have that down. Um, but, you know, in, in whatever you stumble into when you watch the game together, and that's key, when the four of us sit there and watch the game together, there are conversations that come out organically. And when something sounds like it could be a talking point for TV, and that's probably about 10% of it because those conversations <laughs> are a little salty, um, you, you write it down and you, you start it with the guy that you think was the strongest on the topic. And then you hope that the other guys uh, either take it in their direction or contest it or – uh, validate it in their own way. And they're really good at doing that stuff. And, and uh, big poppy's that he is an interesting guy, man. Another guy who's, he, he has a, a, a way of thinking and a way of processing the game that is unique to his personality. And that's why they like him there. Not to mention, he's really funny. I mean, really funny. He is the most amenable dude. <laughs> like he's like a cameo video waiting to happen. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> Matt version is here. Uh, thank goodness Matt Vaskersian was on the desk Saturday night after the Padres beat the Dodgers because he had that insight. He knows the history of the Padre organization. He knows the how downtrodden this sports community has been. Um, and so it was really great that Matt Vaskersian was on the desk. Matt, were you, though, just as a baseball man, were you shocked by what the Padres actually pulled off? Yes. I really was. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and say that I thought the Padres were going to beat the Dodgers in the division series. Um, you know, when it was 2 nothing L.A. in game four, 
we were all making plans in the studio to do game five coverage live from Dodger Stadium the next night. They were they were trying to figure out how to get a desk up there. They were trying to figure out where to put a production trailer. They were making arrangements to share the production truck with the game crew. I mean, we all thought it was going to go that way. And then a five-run bottom of the seventh in some really unlikely stuff happening there. Cronenworth with a big hit against a left-hander. There were well-hit balls. There were bloops. There was a defensive miscue by the Dodgers. Like, none of that stuff you could have seen coming. None of it. The only thing that happened that I was confident was going to happen was that Musgrove was going to pitch well. But it looked like two runs were going to be enough for L.A. I, I was shocked the way the whole series went down, Scott. Really, like, getting to Kershaw was the key in game two. Um, and, and maybe you could even go back further. Close, tightening up the game at the end of game one, even though they lost game one, I think that gave them a little confidence. Like, hey, big bad Dodgers, you know? I mean, the Peter Seidler line, the dragon from up north on the freeway, we want to slay. Like, it was slayable at that point. Um, it was a huge upset. I mean, that was, the, if you had if you'd put a little money on the Padres and the Phillies to reach the NLCS, even at the beginning of the playoffs, you probably would have gotten, I don't know, plus 1,700, plus, plus 2,100 on that matchup. Nobody saw this coming on, on either side. Maddie, when you're looking at this Padres, it kind of feels like they're just like disrupting the entire system of baseball. Like Peter Seiler coming in, spending like a big market franchise, I think the fifth highest payroll this year. And the reaction to it's been really interesting, whether it be Brian Kenny just straight up saying Joe Musgrove cheated against the Mets. And now like some national media writers today talking about how we need to alter the, the playoff format because it wasn't yeah. fair that the Dodgers had five days off. Like what have you just made? of the Padres coming in here kind of like a tidal wave and just disrupting the entire system of baseball feels like. Yeah. Yeah. Disrupting is a good way to put it. Um, I'll further that too. If Cleveland um, advances, you know, the disruption is complete because I think the last thing um, any of the broadcasters, the rights holders, that is the companies or uh, the league wanted to see was to lose you know, the Braves, the Dodgers, the Yankees uh, in the same postseason. They like those big market teams for TV ratings and for dollars. Um, it's something Padres fans are aware of. And and the suggestion that the league wants certain teams to advance is something that nobody would cop to. It's just a reality. Um, not not at somebody's expense, but I think you know what I'm saying, right? It's the, the big business team. of baseball. Yeah, yeah better, better put. Um, the disruption element is interesting because – you know, the Padres have their detractors nationally, as you guys are aware of. And you, you mentioned the suggestion that Musgrove was, quote unquote, cheating against the Mets. That's only just a part of it. Right. I mean, um, they get they get criticized for having sold out the farm system to make the deals they made because there are people that don't like uh, spenders. Um, I, I think that's all nonsense. Look, whatever it takes to win, especially when you're the Padres and you're up against 54 seasons of title less history, you got to do whatever it takes. I give AJ Preller a lot of credit. Give, give Mr. Seidler more credit for giving him that huge canvas, that checkbook to write from. And uh, nobody can deny that it's worked. Now we don't watch a lot of Phillies baseball. I don't want to break any news here, but <laughs> what, what have they done? to outplay the Braves and what should Padre fans be aware of going into a series against them? Yeah, that's a good question. Look, they've got two starters who they, um, who they are going to ride the backs of this entire postseason. Not unlike the Padres and the similarities are, are pretty ripe here. They have a bullpen that had its trouble during the, the regular season that is clicking and sailing as smoothly as it has at any point at the most important time of the season. So their bullpen has been on lockdown, and they've got these two studs, Aaron Nola and Zach Wheeler, who they both shut down during the season. Um, and, and that seems to be the trend. You take your workhorse starters, and if you think you have a chance to pitch deep into the fall and they're not feeling completely right, even if they are feeling right, stick them on the IL. Let them miss two to three starts. They did that with Wheeler um, even though he did have a, a, a little naggy injury. Aaron Knoll is a guy that was throwing harder in September than he was at any point during the season. Those two guys are studs. And then as far as the lineup goes, um, 
a lot of similarities there too. It all revolves around Harper. And without the universal DH, think about this, Harper would not have played because of the elbow injury he sustained. He can't play the outfield. He can't throw. So without the DH, he they would have been without him and probably wouldn't have been this far. Schwarber was cold in the division series, but he's a guy that could erupt at any point. They're really good. I mean, there's similarities here. I got this series as a coin flip, man. I wouldn't know how to handicap it. Uh, I'm not sure who's opened as the favorites, but it's going to be a great series. Matt Vaskersian is here. Matt Vaskersian was part of the original lineup of 1090 going back to 2003. He's obviously moved on to great success, and he was there Saturday night in L.A. hosting the postgame for Fox, which was awesome for those of us that were watching, which, again, I went back and watched on Sunday morning. Because to have Matt Vaskersian with his history with the Padre organization, with the city of San Diego, and by the way, really understanding all of Southern California, being from L.A., working now for the Angels. I mean, you could not have had a better person sitting on that desk. Matt, isn't it interesting, though, that all of this Padre stuff is happening and there is no Tatis? And a guy like Kim has been so good this year. And even though he drives me nuts because he pops up, it seems like, every time, Man, he came up so clutch as part of that seventh inning. So what I'm getting at is the Padres are where they are, and they don't have the young superstar, one of the faces of the entire MLB. Yeah, it's crazy. That is one of the things that makes this so incredibly unlikely. It, the suggestion during spring training that Tatis wouldn't play at all this year and that they would be four wins away from a World Series no chance anybody would bite in on that. No chance. Um, I, you know, I don't know what happens moving forward. I think that's a topic for the offseason. But it really is interesting because, as you mentioned, Kim's come up with some big hits, and, and he's played well. And he's very popular internally, too. The guys like him a lot. Um, but Fernando Tatis is the guy that you've made the financial commitment to for sure. Uh, what a disappointing season for him. Not only is that injury thing – probably something that didn't thrill the organization. The PED thing and subsequent denial was really unseemly. And that was the moment, getting back to what you mentioned earlier, Scott, that was the moment where it, it started to look like it was about to unravel. Mm -hmm. And then you had Hader uh, mysteriously falling apart and then getting it back together again just as quickly. Really has been one of the most redemptive seasons in a short period of time uh, that I can remember for any team. Matt Vaskersian is here. This is Kaplan and crew from the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. Um, hey, Matt, can we just, on? we got about three minutes left here. I just want to ask you, on a personal note, could you just kind of explain what's going on in your world right now? Because it seemed like you were in L.A. Saturday, I think maybe back to the East Coast. I'm not, can you just explain what's going on in your real life? Yeah, it's a, it's in shambles. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, my, my day job, my real gig, so to speak, is, is still with MLB Network, and I'll be um, you know, on their desk and doing postseason work there. Uh, I'll be back with Fox this coming weekend in Philly because they were nice enough to allow me to fill in for Burkhart when Kevin goes and does NFL. So he's got NFL commitments this coming weekend, and I'll be out there for the middle part of this NLCS in Philly that atmosphere will be ridiculously electric as it will be at Petco Park. Um, and, you know, I'm still trying to moonlight and do as many Angels games as I can. Winter is a time that I put my feet up a little bit more and I do a morning talk show on MLB Network. Uh, it's very inside baseball because it's hard. It's hard to make baseball super relevant in the throes of the NFL and college football season. So after the World Series, a lot of people kind of go away from our sport for a little while, but we do have some diehards and we do have people in the game that still pay attention, players, executives, um, people attached to baseball. It's really, it's really this game now that keeps me busy. And this game is now a, a year round enterprise. How, how many angel games you call this year? I only did 40 games this year. And that was, um, that was lower. It was a lesser number than we had hoped for. We kind of thought uh, at the beginning of the season that the remote technology was going to stick around that everybody used during the pandemic. There were a few teams that did remote games this year. It didn't really work out for the Angels for a ton of reasons, so they pulled the plug on it in uh, April. There were some technical challenges, among other things, that misfired, and my number went down dramatically. So um, 
I do love doing Angels games. I, I, I love working with Mark Gubza. He's awesome. And, uh, you know, we'll see how that shakes out moving forward. Wow. You are a busy dude, man. Eh, not really. It's just baseball, man. It's, <laughs> I'm a one trip pony. You guys touch every sport. Right? <laughs> rolled up on just one game it's okay well let me say man it is great to see you great to talk to you uh can't wait to watch you on the desk for this padres phillies national league championship series and matt like i said got about 30 seconds to go here just final thought again it was awesome to have you telling the country the history of the padres this past saturday night that was amazing nice to say man i was glad to get uh tony gwynn's name in there a couple times um you know, I just I wanted to kind of hit the San Diego angle from a historical perspective and and not just fawn on the current 26 man roster. Um, so hopefully we did that. It's it's good being with you guys. And, and thanks for the kind words. It was awesome uh, kind of having a small a small role in that thing on Saturday night. Yeah, I mean, that was so cool. Matt Vaskersian, uh, we'll all be watching him again on Fox this upcoming week for the National League Championship Series. And uh, maybe one of my favorite parts is Manny shirtless in the post-game interview. Stick around, everybody. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. Lots more to get to. This is Kaplan and Crew on a Monday afternoon. Many are adding companion units or ADUs to bring more value to their homes. Our experience, plus our strong relationship with the city, makes adding on easier for our homeowners. We listen to you first, then design and build. Visit murraylampert.com for your consultation. You're watching Kaplan and Crew tonight, powered by the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio in your view, featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. The Rich Eisen Show airs Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. An engaging blend of insightful football expertise with an offbeat mix of humor and pop culture while continuing to attract the most recognizable names in sports and entertainment. Only on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. SoCal Sports Talk. Drivers are getting in accidents at a rate we've never seen before, jumping 18% since 2020. There are higher incidents of speeding and more aggressive driving since the pandemic began. Please slow down and drive safely. It can save a life. to medical technology explore how people are leading healthier lives on your health join erica cardenas as she introduces you to health experts and discover how our daily choices affect our well-being plus learn simple tips for a healthier living your health sunday at 4 30 p.m on your view and yourview.com your health is brought to you by clever care health plan your partners for comprehensive care
At the Barnes Firm, we're seeing more pedestrian and bicycle accidents. Drivers are rolling through red lights and distracted driving makes every intersection a danger zone for pedestrians. Look both ways when crossing, even if you have the right of way. Listen to the Mike Greenberg Show, 7 to 9 a.m. Pacific, Monday through Friday. Greeny brings his unmatched depth of sports knowledge, fun, and entertainment back to ESPN on a daily basis. The Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk, and the Mightier 1090.com. Hola, I'm J.R. Cardenas. And I'm Vanessa Ramirez. We're the hosts for Subida, where we showcase California restaurants, music, art, culture, and so much more. We would love to talk to you about featuring your business on our show. Yes, and as an added bonus, you get to keep the professional video segment to repurpose and use on your website or social media channels. Please click on the link below to get more information about how to put your business on Subida. Mm-hmm. We hope to hear from you soon. Great things can be achieved when a community comes together. Join Erica Cardenas on Doing More as she introduces you to ordinary people working side by side to confront tremendous challenges and make a positive impact in their community. Watch Doing More Sunday night at 6 on Your View or stream it online at yourview.com. Brought to you by Procopio, San Diego's largest law firm, committed to community, representing San Diegans for more than 75 years. You're watching Kaplan and Crew tonight, powered by the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio and Your View, featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. Many are adding companion units or ADUs to bring more value to their homes. Our experience, plus our strong relationship with the city, makes adding on easier for our homeowners. We listen to you first, then design and build. Visit murraylampert.com for your consultation. Hey, what's going on to all of our Cox Your View viewers out there? Scott Kaplan here from the Kaplan and Crew Studios. And coming up this weekend, if you are a rugby fan, now I will tell you, um, I don't know the game of rugby all that well, but I do know this. It's gotten real popular here in San Diego in particular. Um, I know a lot of people whose kids play high school rugby, going on to play rugby in college, and a big collegiate rugby event, and it will be streamed all weekend with your view and it'll be televised on Sunday, the semifinals and the finals. Liz Entwistle will be on the call during the television broadcast and she's joining us right now. Hi, Liz. How are you? Hi, Scott. Doing well. I'm thrilled to be here and thrilled for the event this weekend. We've had a uh, quite a fall so far of warm up tournaments and getting to see a lot of these team in action and really a full season back given all of the pauses and changes within the last two years too. Um, so it'll be fantastic seeing a lot of these teams at full strength. So Liz, um, complete rugby novice, know very little. You know, there used to be a sevens event here in San Diego many years ago that I got to see in person. And I love to see the athletes in the game, but I don't know a whole lot about it. Can you tell us about what the weekend is, what the West Coast Sevens Tournament is all about? Sure. So I'll go back. That tournament that is in San Diego was actually part of the World Rugby World Seven Series. And that is an event that takes place over the course of several weekends throughout the year all around the world. Um, we'll be coming up to Hong Kong, which is a remake of last year's event uh, this October. But then it starts again with Dubai, uh, Cape Town, South Africa, a stop that's now in Los Angeles, Vancouver. And a lot of players from programs that are participating in this weekend's West Coast Sevens have played for the USA team, but also for other national teams. Um, so this event was started in 2011 when the Olympics awarded Rugby Sevens a spot in the Rio Olympics. And since then, we've had the Olympic Games in Tokyo as well. And it's really set up as a tournament to take college rugby and elevate it and provide more playing opportunities. So we actually had a first leg at Cal Poly that was the weekend prior to this. And before that, a warm-up tournament at UCLA, the Westwood Sevens. Meanwhile, teams by you, uh, University of San Diego and UCSD actually played each other in some friendly scrimmages. So it's all about game preparation, elevating programs, providing more opportunities to play and tons and tons of action. So with 16 teams this weekend, there'll be four pools of four. You're going to see national champion caliber teams uh, Cal Berkeley is a team to look for. University of Arizona, we'll see Utah coming in, but also some defending national champions in the form of University of Southern California, who won the USA Rugby, uh, sorry, the uh, the Blue Division 
in the national championships at Kennesaw State earlier this year. And then we also saw University of San Diego win the men's red division, which is a D1AA competition. And four of these teams also competed in the gold D1A level too. So there's so many interesting storylines to look for in terms of programs on the rise, established teams, who's going to be the next national team player. A program like UCLA has a player in the form of Lucas LeCamp, who's actually not playing in this competition because he's in the USA Rugby National Team setup. And so he's in residency um, in Chula Vista, hoping to get a World Series spot and build towards the next cycle of the Olympics and the Rugby World Cup. Okay, so I am just so blown away by everything you just said, and I wish we had like 20 minutes. We've only got a few. Um, I love opportunity for athletes, and I, and it just sounds like there is so much in rugby. So here's a question for you. It, are these like um, are these varsity teams at these universities? Are these club teams? Can you just explain that? We've got about two minutes to go, but I'd really love to hear about that. Yes, a few of the teams are varsity teams. So University of California, Berkeley has been an established varsity program for quite some time. If you think of legacy programs, you know, they are the old like Iowa men's wrestling or like the UNC and Duke basketball of the rugby world. We have teams like Grand Canyon University out of Arizona. That's a relatively new program, but also has players sign a, a commitment letter and provides a lot of opportunities kind of at the next level. Some of these programs, like the USC program I mentioned, Nevada, Reno, um, UC Davis, these are club teams. And some of them will train, you know, twice a week and do strength and conditioning sessions. Some of them will train five days a week. So there's opportunities for entry points to rugby at any level. And sometimes you'll see a player that may start at, you know, say like a Sacramento State that really wants to take their rugby career further and pursue an opportunity at the programs like a GCU or see if they can transfer into like a Berkeley and programs like that as well. So it just kind of depends on what sort of pipeline and different entry points that people have too. Cause a lot of these players will have played over the summer for sevens. A lot of them will affiliate with men's clubs teams. And quite a lot of these players are actually in major league rugby academies, particularly with the San Diego Legion and the LA Giltinis. And um, they've got a fantastic academy setups similar to soccer setups. I am so glad you just mentioned the San Diego Legion because I mean, I'm they're on my radar. I got to get more into this. Hey, listen, I'll, I want to say to everybody who's watching right now, yourview.com y-u-r-v-i-e-w yourview.com saturday from nine o'clock in the morning till 5 p.m we're streaming all day sunday this upcoming sunday from 9 a.m till later in the day almost five o'clock that's when you're going to see all of this stuff um the semifinals and the final games between 2 and 4 40 in the afternoon on television liz have a great call for all of these games and thanks for the information we really appreciate it not a problem. I mean, for more information, you can follow the West Coast Sevens either on the internet, also all over social media too. Stay tuned for all the scoring updates, player highlights, and more. There you go. Liz Entwistle, great to visit with you. Stick around. More to come. The NFL lives here. If it's about the NFL, you found the right station. Join 1090 every Sunday during the NFL season for the exclusive SoCal home of not one, but two NFL games every Sunday during the season on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Many are adding companion units or ADUs to bring more value to their homes. Our experience, plus our strong relationship with the city, makes adding on easier for our homeowners. We listen to you first, then design and build. Visit murraylampert.com for your consultation. Watch live streaming rugby action for two full days with West Coast Sevens Collegiate Tournament from Treasure Island in San Francisco on Saturday, October 22nd and Sunday, October 23rd on yourview.com. See some of the best college teams in the West, including the number one ranked Cal Golden Bears and the 2019 Cup champions, UCLA. Then tune in and catch the televised Cup semifinals and finals on your view from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. on Sunday, October 23rd. Visit yourview.com for more information. Change the way you look and feel with San Diego's most comprehensive varicose and spider vein treatment facility. San Diego Varicose Vein Treatment Center offers minimally invasive, pain-free procedures performed by board-certified cardiologist Dr. Tahizade. With over 17 years of experience, we specialize in the diagnosis of varicose veins, spider veins on the face, hands, and legs, ankle discoloration, leg swelling, and more. Improve your vein health today. Visit consultation.sdveintreatment.com or call 619-582-2404. From fitness to medical technology, explore how people are leading healthier lives on Your Health. Join Erica Cardenas as she introduces you to health experts and discover how our daily choices affect our well-being. Plus, learn simple tips for a healthier living. Your Health, Sunday at 4.30 p.m. on Your View and yourview.com. Your Health is brought to you by 
Clever Care Health Plan, your partners for comprehensive care. Thank you for joining us. Catch Scott Kaplan and crew tonight from 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific, every Monday through Friday. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk. Should be fun. Hey, what are you doing? I'm texting my family goodbye because we don't know what's gonna happen today. Well, maybe you should tell them. We're at a place called Field of Screams. That should tell you enough. Today on? Sue that. Okay, so how much do you think you're gonna scream? You think you're gonna- Help! 